So now we're going to get into the management of TOS, specifically conservative management, um, specifically what we might do as physical therapists when a patient comes in with thoracic outlet syndrome. Um, conservative management is going to be recommended for neurogenic TOS over vascular TOS. It is controversial on what specific treatment intervention should be done, so we have to use a multimodal approach and a, and a patient-specific approach. Patient education is key. Um, therapeutic exercise is key with active stretching and targeted muscle strengthening. And then also we want to just talk to them about lifestyle changes, um, ergonomic setups for their work for their workplace, modifying activities that might be causing more of that exertional TOS. And then for the purposes of this presentation, we're going to get into the specifically the manual therapy. So what can we do as physical therapists uh, utilizing our manual therapy skills to help people with th uh, these neurogenic TOS symptoms? So some of the more common areas that, um, are, that we could intervene with are joint mobilizations and manipulations to the cervical spine, the thoracic spine, and the um, first rib. We could also do soft tissue, um, fascia techniques to um, the muscles in this area that might have a fascial imbalance. I want to get into some of the areas that are not as well described in the literature and other joints that we can consider working on as a manual therapist. So one joint or a couple joints that, to start, the AC and SC joints. The clavicle is part of this thoracic outlet, and as we move our arms overhead, the clavicle has to move. Those, that clavicle is connected to our sternum and our acromion, so it would, it would be good for us to look at how their AC joint mobility is and how their SC joint mobility is. Um, looking at AC joint posterior and inferior glides, looking at um, the posterior, inferior, and superior glides of the SC joint, if there's a restriction here, then we, we would want to intervene and mobilize that spot to help uh, decrease their symptoms and help get that clavicle moving better. So kind of going off that, the clavicle position and the mobility of that's going to be important to look at as well. We have multiple muscles that insert to the clavicle. So you, can, you could kind of imagine if the clavicle is not functioning well, these muscles can get, um, can get tightened up and, and not move well. And so doing some uh, joint mobilizations to the clavicle and then fascia techniques to those muscles around it um, would be beneficial as well. We should also look at the um, cervical and clavi pectoral fascia. So um, kind of as those pectoral muscles insert into the clavicle where this fascial connections are, fascia can be painful um, and it could also hinder um, the mobility of the clavicle and cause potentially compression in that um, subcoracoid space. So we want to, this could be another area of, of why we want to intervene here and maybe try some fascial techniques. The scapula, as we talked about the acromion, the acromion is part of the scapula. So depending on how the scapula's position is at rest and how it moves with mobility, when we move our arm overhead, if that scapula is in a winged or elevated position, um, that can potentially create a narrowed space at the thoracic outlet. And again, using some scapular mobs um, and scapular retraining, neuromuscular re-education re, um, re training would be helpful for these, for these individuals. Another area to look at is the cervical th thoracic junction. So where that cervical spine meets the thoracic spine. Um, if there's a mobility deficit here, that's going to directly influence that first rib because the first rib is connected to these joints. So again, mobilizing here can help, can therefore help first rib mobility. Going to the upper cervical spine, um, these kind of where the occiput meets the C1 and C2, we can have extensor muscle tightness here, and then we could have compensatory. Um, side bending and rotation of those joints. If we feel that, if we feel that there is a tightness here, if we feel that there's a joint restriction here, then we should mobilize this area. Um, and that could kind of indirectly help with those, with the um, thoracic outlet area and the symptoms down their arm. Kind of what I was describing where the upper C-spine and that lower C-spine, upper T-spine area can be hypomobile. 
um, not moving well, we get hypermobility in the mid cervical spine. Um, and that's the, that's what Jonda describes as the upper cross syndrome that we all know well. We could get the tight muscles of the suboccipitals, the upper traps, levator scaps, pec, pectoral muscles, and then we get the weak deep neck, deep neck flexor muscles, rhomboids, low traps. So those are the areas that we want to um, actively, you know, stretch and target to, to strengthen as well as working on those joints that we talked about earlier. Um, and then, as I mentioned, the mid cervical spine has some hypermobility that we want to assess. And then we're going to look at the neural tension, the mechanosensitivity of these nerves. So putting the arm in different positions um, will help us assess whether, um, where the nerves will be entrapped as they go down the arm and which nerves may be um, involved here. Um, by doing nerve glides or nerve flossings are good techniques to increase blood flow to the nerves, to decrease the sensitivity of those nerves and improve um, symptoms and function. So also we wanna look at how our patient's breathing and if there's a breathing dysfunction here. Um, we have to think of people who have apical breathers or kind of the chest breathers. Um, their first rib position may be elevated, may not be moving well. Um, and that's going to cause changes to the ribs and to the diaphragm mobility, and therefore it's going to cause low transfer differences throughout the thoracic spine. So that can therefore create shoulder uh, compensations in the shoulder girdle and in the neck. So we not only want to assess the first rib and assess the those joints and mobilize and, and work on the muscles uh, accordingly, but we might also have to intervene with some teaching, reteaching them diaphragmatic breathing. And then muscles coming off our hyoid bone, can uh, they, they connect to the sternum. So as we talked about that, sternoclavicular joint mobility may be, um, may be off, may be dysfunctional. The muscles here may also be dysfunctional, causing that, and may be tight and restricted, causing that. So working on these muscles are another area to consider.